الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Cherisha and sustainer of the universe and may his choicest blessings be upon his final messenger Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family, his companions radiyallahu anhum and all those who follow him Shukran Jazeelan for joining us today you are tuned to ITV and say global productions quick and easy cooking and we hope that you're going to be part of the second edition of the ITV quick and easy cooking book the first one is full of tried and tested recipes by profound names in our community and we hope that our guest today Sister, Sister Sumeya Esop will also be part of the second edition Inshallah I hope so Inshallah, Inshallah. Sister Inshallah. Sumeya is out from out here in Midrand a wonderful person, kinesiologist, as I said, by profession, always helping people, also doing a lot of social upliftment work. And today she's going to be sharing some recipes with us. But before that, let's welcome her to the program. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome. Alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. wa rahmatullahi wa I hope you feel better. As you can see, behind there is her crutch. She's hurt her leg. Alhamdulillah, I'm walking. <laughs> shukran. That's alhamdulillah. what is important. Ji, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. But shukran for making it today to the complex and sharing your recipe with us. You really are an amazing woman. It all comes from Allah Ta'ala and once we make the intention to want to uplift and inspire then Allah makes the way. Absolutely. Alhamdulillah. And are you comfortable so we can yes, proceed? Yes, So what are we cooking today? So we're making something interesting. Mm -hmm. It's actually from a restaurant that was once in Durban, the North Beach, mm -hmm. Bombay to Beirut. And there was a dish there called polo mastada. Okay. So would you like to know it? The origin Please, yes, So yes. what happened was when we were younger, my late dad used to love to take us out to eat. So when we would order the food, he would want to check what I've ordered. And then, because it was always yes. unusual. So what he would inspire me to do was whatever I ordered, to come home and try and make it okay. and try and replicate the, the, the taste recipe. of yes, that. Yes, yes. So what it taught me was, number one, to understand the, uh, how much our parents actually influence us. And number two, that we need to eat consciously. We yes, all just go eat. chomp, chomp. So this dish, polo mustada, originated at that restaurant, which is no longer there, at oh. Durban North Beach, to a recipe book, which I don't know what happened to it, oh. to today. Alhamdulillah. So, so we're reviving hopefully, it. Hopefully it will be in the new Inshallah. Uh, the second edition Inshallah. of the ITV. It's Christmas quite recipe. easy. It's quite different. So if you're having guests over and you want to impress them with something new and unusual, this is it. Oh, fantastic. So what are the ingredients? So the ingredients, I will start off with the spices. Okay. Right. So we've got some grated cheese. Mm. I personally have prefer the white cheese, but you can also mm. use yellow, yellow cheese. cheese okay. Yeah. And then I've got some crushed garlic. For those people that find crushed garlic too potent, they can use um, garlic powder. Okay. And then I've got some aromat there, about two tablespoons of aromat for flavor. Mm. So you will see I haven't put salt because aromat has enough salt. Mm. And then the mustard seeds, I think that's mm. the secret that's ingredient. Okay. There's the mustard seeds. And then we've got the turmeric, which is the haldi. Mm. Um, that's about a teaspoon. So this dish is actually quite yellow. Okay. And then uh, we've got some olive oil just to drizzle when we're braising the brinjal. Okay. And then the recipe asks for one cup of fresh cream, but we've added extra here because we want it saucy, we don't want it dry. Right, fantastic. And then what we've done, so what it, I did was I took three chicken fillets, so it works out to about 300 grams, mm -hmm. and then you slice it thinly, mm -hmm. so it's like slivers. Yes. And then it must not, so you wash it, you first you wash it, you pat it dry and then you cut it into slivers. Mm -hmm. And then you are going to coat it in southern fried chicken coating. I use the mild flavor, but for some, for other people, if they want, they can use flour and they can season it with salt and pepper, or they can use corn flour or any other gluten-free option. Mm -hmm. And then we've got one long brinjal, which has been sliced into one and a half, um, uh, half a centimeter to one centimeter thickness and one medium onion sliced um, thinly as well mm -hmm. and that is it and then so you coat this and so you coat it so what you basically do is you just take it so you don't dip it into, into anything okay. so the idea is just to keep the chicken flavored okay and there's no frying of the chicken so actually besides the fresh cream if you look at the ingredients there's no actually um, richness to it but mm -hmm. the taste is actually quite exquisite yeah yes, yes. 
Um, but you know what? Some people also like, we Indian, we like spices and mirchi masala. <laughs> you can add some green masala to your taste. And if you prefer to have a lot of a more salt, you can also add some salt to taste. Okay. So what I also like about this is the versatility of the recipe. Where today we've just used brinjal. If you want to be fancy, adventurous, you can add some sliced mushrooms and try it. Okay. That will be interesting, hey? Yeah, I've tried it but with But today mushrooms. you've got the brinjals. No, today I've got the brinjals because it's time, sometimes it's nice to do something different. Yes, and it's in season, so it's... It know. is in season, and also another nice tip I learned from my mom is that when you're buying brinjal or eggplant, you must buy the longer ones. Yes. The thick ones um, tend to be bitter inside. Okay. So the longer ones are sweeter, are sweeter okay. and they don't brown as quickly as the long ones. So there we go. Wonderful. That was quite easy. Very easy. And now we're going to go to the stove. So we're going to leave that for a few minutes just for the crumbs to come onto it. And then yes, we're going to move onto the stove. We are going to lightly fry the brinjal in a, in a skittle or a pan. And um, we'll take, this we'll take it from there. So we've got about two tablespoons of butter here. Um, and you're going to let it melt in the pot. And once it's melted, we're going to add the onion into the pot and braise it until it's soft. Okay. So slightly translucent but not brown because okay. we don't want it to discolor. I'm going to drizzle some um, olive oil in the skittle here mm -hmm. just for the, to fry the brinjals a little bit. Okay. Can you grill it as well or you just... You can it? grill it. The actual original recipe had said to deep fry it. But I found it became too oily. As it is, it has fresh cream. Yes. I found that grilling it didn't affect the taste in any right. way. So yes, if you want, you can actually air fry it in your air fryer for more, even more healthier option. The butter is, the butter is almost melted. So should is we bother this? put the plain I think uh, the onion in there. Okay. Can put the onion in there. Bismillah. Okay, it's sizzling, so it is heating up. Yes. Multitasking. Yeah, I was going to say that this is what women are good at, right? Multitasking. Yeah. However, when I was doing one of my trainings, um, I learned that by multitasking, we are doing a disadvantage to ourselves. Yes. Because now you're not giving full focus on the one thing. Yes. Okay, so, so now you've put the oil on the pan and you've put the brinjals. And as you see the smoke rising, you can turn them over. Okay. So the idea is to cook them lightly. Can you see it's yes, cooking lightly, there? Yes, lightly, yeah. yes. Can you see there? Yes. And it's quite unusual because you don't uh, easily get dishes with brinjal and chicken together. Yes. See? Beautiful. Alhamdulillah. And it's almost done. And it's quick. Yes. That's why we cut it thin. Let's check on our onions. What's happening with Let's our check. onions? Do you want it pink? Uh, just a tiny bit more. But I think we can add the mustard seeds now. Okay. Really. We want them to also roast a bit, give it flavor. And stir. And stir. So you can get the aroma of the mustard seeds, the, the brinjal as yes, well. It's so the beautiful. nutty taste of the mustard seeds, huh? Yes, Mashallah. beautiful. So for those people that prefer to fry their brinjal, once it's cooked like this, yes. they can put it on a kitchen towel to drain. Yes. But because we use so minimal oil, we, there's no need for us yes. to do that. We'll just turn the, the heat off. Yes. And then we'll continue with the chicken. Okay. So there we go. So I've got one teaspoon of haldi powder here, or turmeric as it's known. And gently braise it. I'm going to lower the heat a bit because we're going to be adding the fresh cream shortly and we don't want it to, to overheat. Yes, and then this is the aromat. It's about two tablespoons. You can adjust it, add less or more according to your taste. And if you want to make it more spicy, you can add some green masala at this point. 
And uh, if you want, you can wait to the end before you add the salt, if you okay. want extra. Oh, so you put the garlic now only? I put the garlic now. Because I, I didn't want it to get burnt. Yes. You know, in our Indian cooking, we normally add it's the garlic perfect. first yeah. for the aroma. But you can see here, it still has the aroma. So Wonderful. that's the color. Wonderful. And then what we do before the stuff sticks too much at the bottom, we lower, lower the, the heat, heat further and add the fresh cream. And because we want it more saucy, we're going to add a little bit more than a cup. So this is how it should be. Well, that's summer now. Yeah. So it's almost like a butter chicken type of a consistency. I see that, yes. Um, but without the masala. And then we bring the chicken mm -hmm. and we lower it in slowly one at a time. Interesting. So as you can see, the, the cream mixture is just gently simmering. It is not uh, boiling over. Yes. So what I will do, I'll just shift it a little bit. This is real cooking, hey? This is real cooking. It's called adventurous cooking. Ex ex exceptionally lovely. Aroma is absolutely amazing. It's different. It is. It's different. It's not like the usual that we used to. Yes. So I'm just lowering it in. And then once I've put all the chicken, I'm going to cover the lid and let it simmer. Okay. How long would you let it simmer? About five minutes or so, not too that, long. That's short. Yeah. Because it's, all, it's cooking halfway here in the pot, yeah. and then it's going to cook halfway in the oven as well. Okay. So I'm going to cover it just to let it steam a bit. And the cheese will go on last. The cheese will go in the casserole on top. Oh,